Hey, it's me, China Guitar Skeptic, and today we've got an unboxing video. It's a new toy for the studio out here. I've got multiple microphones that I like to use for recording. However, I saw a video on Boxer Studios' YouTube channel, and they compared a Neumann U87, which is a huge industry standard vocal mic, with this microphone that I've bought for the studio. And that is the Rode NT1A. And I was so blown away by the sound of the NT1A, it was so close to the Neumann that I decided it was a must to add to the studio mic collection. So let's go over and unbox it. Okay, without further ado, we'll get on with the unboxing. I thought it was quite ironic. I bought this, by the way, from Scan Computers for 159 of Her Majesty's Great British Pounds. But what made me laugh is that it came in a box made in China. They're not, of course, they're Australian. But this is obviously some Corsair memory or something that they've shipped and they've used the box. Let's open this up. It seems to be pretty well packaged. I'm really looking forward to having a look at this microphone and I'm also going to do a follow-on video with a blind test with a number of different microphones so hopefully you'll enjoy that. I got told off in my previous video for throwing the knife down. Well, I did actually throw it into the box of the guitar that I was unboxing. Lots of puffies. We love these. Whoa! Okay, there's an invoice of sorts. And here is the package. Get rid of that box, we don't need that. And I do need the knife again to just cut this seal off the box. Where are we there by the looks of it? I think that's done the trick. So this is a package that they offer, which has got the SM6 pop shield included, and it's got the, sorry, the SM6 shock mount with the pop shield built into it. So that's included. It gives you a free XLR cable, 10 year warranty, and of course, the mic itself. I also believe there's a little pouch in here. So let's have a quick see what we've got. I love Rode. Yes, I do think they're quite good. The instructions manual. There's the cable. The microphone itself, complete with the little crystals to keep it dry and a bag to keep it in. And I assume that this next box is the, the shock mount SM6, which is what it says on it. So where do we get into this? Here we are. Well, there's bits of cardboard all over the place here. And there's the shock mount. Okay, let's open these all up and get them out onto the table. Bad choice of cloth for the table today. Black, this is all gonna be black on black. That's, I like this idea of mounting the shock mount and the pop shield together. Um, pop shield's obviously there for reducing the plosives, the explosive sounds, the P's. On this microphone I can demonstrate and ta ta and fa, everything that comes out in a hurry. Uh, and I must remember to turn that down there again because everybody was getting annoyed the other day on the previous video that this microphone was making some funny noises. So there we are, that's the pop shield and the, the shock mount for the road. It's very solid, it seems to be very robust and well made and these individual tighteners seem to be, although they're plastic, they seem to be quite strong. And it's got both types of mic stand mount, which is great. And then there's the mount for the mic itself, which we'll open next. Okay, 
It's very important when you store your microphones, folks, that you do keep these little gel packages, the little crystals, because it helps to reduce or, or at least soak up some of the moisture that may get in and around the microphone. So there it is. This is actually surprisingly light. I thought it would be a heavier microphone. I haven't got the exact weight of measurement uh, to hand, but it feels quite light. But it's exactly what I was expecting. It looks rather nice. So there's the microphone. Hopefully this is a quality lead. I like the fact that they provide the Velcro cable wrap with it. And yet it looks like a fairly decent quality mic lead that comes with it as well. Plus the bag, plus the instructions, plus the I love Rode microphone sticker. So this simply screws into the base of this, which you'll see here. There's a screw mount plate that sits on the bottom like that. That mounts it in the shock mount and make sure it doesn't fall out. Because even though this is not an expensive microphone, it isn't something that you want to be dropping. Now, I've got that round the wrong way. How do I know? Because this little gold dot tells me that that's the front of the microphone. So I will just loosen that off a touch turn the microphone around and then just tighten it into place. So there it is, all ready to be mounted on a microphone stand. Just to give you a little bit of background on the Rode Microphone Company, they're based in Sydney, Australia now, but they were originally started by Henry Friedman and he was from London, uh, an Englishman. <laughs> and he moved to Stockholm in Sweden. I guess that may be where he met his wife, Astrid. And they had their son, Peter Friedman. The Friedmans collectively moved to Australia in the 1960s, I believe, and continued Friedman Electronics there. And later in life, Peter Friedman took over the company and changed the name to Rode and imported 20 mics from China, of all places. So quite a, a neat little tie in with my channel there. Anyway, as per most things with China, they were not particularly great on the quality control and used some pretty cheap components. And so Peter Freeman took them apart, redesigned some of the circuit board and came up with the original of this microphone, the, the NT1. And that was their flagship and really still is, although there is now an NT2 and an NT1000 and an NT1A and there's multiple iterations of various microphones that they make. And I've got another Rode mic, I've got the M3, which is an electric condenser rather than a, a true condenser. The difference, of course, being that they both work with a diaphragm and on an electric, one of the diaphragm plates is charged whereas on a true condenser microphone, the biasing is external from the equipment, so there's no back charge on, the, on any part of the internals of the microphone. Uh, so that's where the NT1 came from. The NT1 is a condenser mic, and it is a cardioid pattern, which means that it, it picks up mostly behind the microphone from one side, it picks up a little bit in the front, so it's got this little heart shape like that. If the mic's here and this is the way that it's pointing, that's the sort of pickup pattern that you get out of it. The NT1 has got a one inch capsule and it's gold plated, the, the diaphragm. The other great thing about this, as well as being a true condenser, externally biased, is that it's supposed to be the quietest mic in the world at five, just five decibels of its own internal noise. So we'll check that out as well. The NT1 has also got an internal, as well as they provide an external SM6 shock mount, but it's also internally shock mounted to prevent any movement noise on the microphone capsule. And finally, Rode offer a 10 year guarantee on all of their microphones, which to me screams quality and QC, quality control. And that is one of the reasons why I've previously bought Rode and why I bought this NT1, which has interested me for quite a while. Obviously, for use with vocals, you would need the, the pop shield, which is advertising quite nicely, but 
we're going to do a sound test with an acoustic guitar because that was one of the things that really interested me about this NT1A, the fact that so many people have recommended it for multi-instrument recording and why I hope it's going to be a very versatile mic out here in the studio. So there will be a test video coming up. In fact, it's going to be a blind test video. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mic up the guitar, which I'll show you on this video. And then I'm going to test several different mics on a blind test for you to see if you can tell the difference. So first thing I'll do is show you how I set up a microphone like this on an acoustic guitar. Okay, so the way that I like to set up the microphone is actually a technique I've learned quite recently um, from the Recording Revolutions YouTube channel. I think that's what they're called. I'll put a link just here, or just here. <laughs> and it makes absolute sense. The acoustic guitar is not listened to really close up like this. So for one thing, I don't put the microphone directly facing the sound hole because you get far too much bass coming through and it, it's far too full range for a good mix. The other technique which a lot of people do is to mic the 12th fret but then that tends to be too tinny and lacks fullness and richness. So what the video shows you is that the best way to mic a guitar is slightly further away and hopefully that will pick up the lovely reverberation in this empty studio at the moment because it's empty so it's got a natural reverb. What they've suggested doing is placing the mic in front of the sound hole to give us good bass range and but quite a distance so we're going to move that microphone to about 12 inches away from the guitar and although it's in front of the sound hole you'll notice that the, it is turned to an angle where the pickup range of the microphone is pointing at the 12th fret and that lovely cardioid pattern gives you a focus around the 12th fret so that's how I'm going to do it and then you'll see that the sound will be just right. I'm going to do another video that will be released at the same time as this one doing the blind test between this microphone and some others so please check that one out as well. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I do all sorts of things, not just guitars, as you can see, but the reason I'm going to test this with a guitar is because I'm primarily a guitar channel. So I hope you've really enjoyed this video, folks, and I'll be back immediately with the blind sound test video. See you then.